Okay, we're going to do a neat little experiment here. I'm just going to show you guys, we've been talking about wattages, different wattages in lamps and what they look like on camera. So I've set up a little scenario here. I've got a variety of bulbs um, and I'm going to swap them out one by one and just uh, we're going to take a look at them on camera. So what I've got here is uh, currently a 15 watt appliance bulb and it's the kind of bulb you can put in your refrigerator or the um, the uh, exhaust hood over your stove. Low wattage, incandescent, so it is dimmable. But the thing about dimming incandescent bulbs is when you do that, they change color temperature and they get warmer and oranger uh, the more you add resistance to the line. So it's not ideal to dim an incandescent bulb. It's better to change the wattage so that you get a nice clean color output as close as you can to 3200 Kelvin. So these bulbs burn at about uh, 2700 degrees Kelvin. Um, so this is a 15 watt appliance bulb in here right now and I'm going to swap it out for next I have a 40 watt incandescent household. Okay, so this is now a 40 watt household bulb. Now I'm going to uh, draw your attention to the histogram on my um, flip out EVF uh, on my GH5 so that you can see I'm at 800 ISO. I have my uh, color balance set to indoors. That's the little uh, bulb icon with the little rays coming off of it in the lower right corner of the uh, uh, EVF. Um, that indicates um, tungsten uh, balanced. And so that means I'm balanced to the color of the bulb in the lamp, not necessarily the color of light coming through the window, which is bluer because it's daylight and it's about 6,000 degrees Kelvin out there because it's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so I want you to see how much brighter the 40 water looks on camera. Now it's probably still tolerable as far as, um, as, far as the way the, um, uh, the bulb looks on camera. Uh, but it is brighter, uh, so it's essentially a stop brighter, one stop brighter um, in terms of relative wattage. So this is a 40 watt incandescent bulb. Okay, so you can see now by comparison, I have a 60 watt uh, LED equivalent replacement bulb in this floor lamp. And if you look at my histogram, you can see that um, I have some values that are approaching clipping, but everything's still kind of intact. Uh, you're going to see a pretty hot highlight in the top of the lampshade at this point uh, developing. And you're going to notice that the blinds outside the windows are, uh, uh, for the window light coming in from outside, uh, those are blowing up pretty good uh, on the histogram. Now, uh, what I can do is start closing down my lens. If I do that, I'm at a 5.6 currently. If I go to a 5.6 and a half, let's say, uh, I can start bringing that lampshade in check. But what it's going to do is it's going to lower the exposure in the overall uh, room. So it's going to affect what other uh, subjects or objects in the frame are going to look like relative to the brightness of that window. So uh, I've gone to a 5.6 and a half at a 60 watt bulb. And next I want to show you uh, what happens when I jump to a 100 watt clear incandescent bulb in contrast. Okay, this is now a 100 watt clear uh, incandescent bulb. It's a household style bulb. It just has a clear jacket. It's not frosted. So by comparison, um, I'm, I'm still at a 4 on my Rokinon 24 millimeter lens right now. We were at a four and a half with the 60 watt LED, which started to bring the value in check on the lampshade. But I'm going to go to a full five uh, to a full F uh, T8 now. I'm sorry, um, and you'll see how the value starts to come into check. If I go to an eight and a half, uh, we get a little bit better uh, response on the lampshade and the blinds on the window are starting to come into an acceptable uh, brightness as well. Um, if we looked at my histogram, you'll see that um, I have some value. I don't have any values that are really clipping over 100 110% right now, um, but I do have some stuff that's hovering near the top, dangerously close to clip. 
So what's happening is uh, the ambience in the room is basically going to start going down because I have to close the f-stop down in order to keep the highlight in check in the lampshade. So this is the result of globing up, we call it, taking a higher wattage uh, in order to get more output out of the lamp. Okay, what you're looking at now is a General Electric number 211 photo flood. Now, the photo flood, as I said before, has a phosphor balance. There's gases inside the jacket combined with halogen uh, that help the filament burn cleanly uh, and balance uh, the color to 3200 Kelvin. So it's photographically correct when you're on the uh, 3200 Kelvin balance setting on your digital camera. Okay. Um, the window light coming through the blinds is still daylight, so that's why it appears bluer. Um, and I'm, I'm on a Rokinon 24, shooting at 24p, 1 over 48 is my shutter speed. So I'm at 180 degree shutter angle, for those of you who are uh, film students here. And uh, you can see that the highlight in the lampshade is now, it's getting progressively brighter. It might look a little cleaner and less orange than the 100 watt uh, household bulb that we just looked at. Uh, that's because it is color balanced, um, so it'll appear it'll appear a little bit cleaner when you have your camera's uh, Kelvin balance setting to 3200. Um, however, uh, in order to keep all these values in check, what I've I, I'm basically at a T8 and a half. I could really go to a T11, which would look like this, and that would really bring the value of the lampshade into check. Uh, where it's usable and my highlights aren't blowing out. Um, if I do that though, of course, I'm losing a lot of ambience in the room. So that's a consideration. Um, the lowest wattage in the GE uh, photo floods is uh, 150 watts, which is what this number 211 represents. Um, so if you want photographically color correct bulbs, I think you're 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 gonna start at uh, I'm sorry this is a 75 watt number 211 I'm sorry so this is 75 watts uh, not 150 watts that's next um, so at 75 watts you can see that um, the room is getting a little bit darker and um, so the ambience is slowly uh, dying out in the room as a result of having to close down the f-stop to keep the lampshade from clipping so let's take a look next at the GE number 212. The 212 photo flood uh, is 150 watts, and I think that's going to uh, change things considerably. Okay, at this point, I want to mention, uh, again, I want to reiterate that um, I'm on the GH5. I'm at uh, shutter speed of 1 over 48, which is 180 degree shutter. I'm at uh, 24p, and I am on a Rokinon cinema lens, and I'm currently at T11 on the lens. What we have loaded up now, what we're looking at is the GE number 212, which is a 150 watt photo flood. Okay, it's 3200 Kelvin balanced uh, color temperature. And I have the camera set to indoor color balance, which is 3200 Kelvin. And what you can see from my photo of the histogram is that um, my values are now at 100% in my highlights. Uh, the window at T11 is coming nicely into exposure uh, in terms of the light coming in from outside. Uh, and the lampshade is a bit bright, uh, but it might be tolerable. We'll have to look at the finished uh, video to make sure. But again, the ambience in the room is slowly going down. Okay, so anybody who was going to be keyed by this lamp uh, is going to have a pretty contrasty low side uh, for any portion of their face or their body that is uh, sort of positioned away from this lamp if this lamp were their key light. So we would definitely be adding uh, an interval of fill at some point to... Um, to, to help this situation. Now I have a light standing by and if I turn it on you can see what adding uh, a little bit of fill will do to that situation. It, it is helping to bring back some of the uh, shadow areas to a little bit more manageable density. Um, it hasn't affected my uh, clip value. That's still um, set at 100% because of the lampshade. 
Um, but the fill value is helping. If I pan it in and out, maybe you can see what happens. So that's away. And if I bring it back on, you can see what a little bit of added fill does for pre predominantly the um, shadow values on the back wall. Um, so this is a GE number 212, 150 watt photo flood, and I am at T11. If I go back to our original 5.6, I can show you what all the values would look like with the 150 watt bulb. And I think that um, that's pretty hot looking. Uh, and I have definitely have some values that are uh, clipping uh, at 110%, which is... Um, that's not good for the digital video file because that means there is information that has uh, been lost uh, in the exposure and it's no longer represented in the, uh, the pixel fabric of the file itself. So uh, it's not a good idea to glow up your lamps to something like 150 watts um, and keep your shooting stop the same if your highlights are going to clip because we want to be able to maintain all that information so we can color correct it and adjust it effectively in post. So I'm going to go back to my shooting stop of an 11 for this bulb and you can see what happens to all the values in the room. Everything kind of crushes down nicely at that point. So this is T11 with a GE number 212 photo flood. Okay, next up in our menagerie here is a General Electric uh, Photo Flood number 213. Now a 213 is a photo balanced photo flood 250 watts um, with a household base. So you can globe up um, the lamps with uh, GE 213s um, or Sylvania 213s if uh, you prefer that brand and uh, you can get a pretty nice fill level in the room overall but if you have to look at this practical you'll see that the lampshade is just blowing up so that's not something that we want to see on camera um, I'm still at my uh, shooting stop of a T11 on my Rokin on 24 millimeter um, I could stop down uh, to an 11 and a half. When I do that though, there's some obvious implications. Uh, I'm now extending my depth of field. Um, so we get, you know, we don't get the virtue of selective focus uh, on this lens, uh, which on the GH5 is an equivalent focal length of about 50 millimeters. So you would expect a measure of uh, fall off in the depth of field. Uh, with a 24 millimeter lens on a, on a camera with a micro four thirds sensor. But because I'm at a shooting stop of T11 and a half to manage this uh, highlight on this practical, that's all out the window at this point. So if I show you what the original shooting stop of a 5.6 looks like, uh, boom, that's where we were uh, when we started this process with the 15 watt appliance bulb and as you can see uh, the windows blowing up the lampshades blowing up I mean none of this is usable now the ambience in the room looks pretty good so if I needed this for fill and it wasn't going to be on camera I might go ahead and throw a 213 into the lamp uh, and use it as a fill light off camera for anything else happening in the room that might be fine but I can't have this lamp on camera as a working practical with a 213 placed inside it at a shooting stop of a T56. It's just not going to happen. Uh, my depth of field looks nicer on a close-up at T56, uh, especially for feature work, um, but I can't do it. So this is why we want to experiment with different wattages of photo floods and households so we can see which ones look best on camera if we have to see the lamp and which ones work best at for fill level if they're not going to be on camera and they're just going to do the work of controlling our contrast. Okay, and if we have a look at the histogram, uh, you can see that um, stuff's blowing up all over the place. Um, the 213 is just, is just too powerful. Uh, I'm at um, ISO 800, which is the, one of the native uh, ISOs of the GH5. Um, and so that is my best ISO to be at in terms of um, uh, 
codex and color correction uh, capabilities uh, in, in terms of my noise floor. Um, I could go to a 400 ISO, I suppose, and if I were to do that, uh, the image would be about a stop more controlled, um, but I, I still have a pretty unmanageable highlight in the lampshade. So I think that um, this bulb, like I said, is great for fill. Uh, it might be fine for a, a lamp that's deep, deep in the distance uh, of frame. Uh, in the background, for instance, where you know a random highlight, uh, which is going to be out of focus anyway, might look nice uh, in terms of its bokeh. But if I'm going to use this in proximity to an, an actor on camera, uh, I'm going to have to uh, manage this exposure a little better under the lampshade. Okay, I'm going to show you now a couple of interesting bulbs that you may not have come in contact with before. That's the 60-watt um, blue and the uh, Sylvania ECA 250-watt uh, blue photo flood. Okay, here's where it starts getting interesting. So, this is a Sylvania 60-watt blue. It has a household base, medium screw base, uh, so you can put it in any, any lamp, um, but it has a dyed gas jacket so there's a blue dye on the inside of the glass jacket that is changing the color temperature from 3200 Kelvin to something like 4500 Kelvin. So it has introduced uh, some blue spectrum into the output of this lamp. So what you'll notice immediately if you look at the lampshade is the highlight has less of a golden amber umbra to it. Um, and it's a little bit whiter or cleaner looking in terms of its color temperature. So if I were to go to a daylight color balance for this to accommodate this bulb, um, you could see that it still on daylight balance appears a little orange uh, by comparison to the daylight coming through the window, but um, it, is, it is certainly not as orange as it, as it would be if it was a standard 60 watt incandescent bulb. So. I'm going to go back to indoor balance, I think, because uh, that uh, is working a little nicer. Everything is cool in tone, which I kind of like. Um, but as far as um, the color of the highlight, it's, it's keeping all that in check. And if you check out the histogram uh, at a shooting stop of a 5, 6 and a half, all the highlights are nicely inside of the 100% clip line on my histogram. So. Uh, I know that all of those values can be pushed and pulled in post-production, and I can brighten it up or darken it a little bit without losing detail, uh, which is good. That's a good thing. So as far as uh, uh, acting as a practical, as a potential key light source, this 60-watt blue is doing a nice job. It has a nice color temperature. It keeps the highlight nice and clean in the lampshade. Uh, it's balancing pretty well at a T5, 6.5 with the light coming through the window. And uh, I think it looks pretty good. So the next globe, the final globe that I want to show you at this point is going to be the Sylvania uh, uh, ECA, which is 250 watt um, blue. And uh, we're going to um, compare that to the, the rest of the, uh, the trial run here. Okay, last but not least, I give you the Sylvania BCA. So this is a blue photo flood, uh, 250 watts. It has a blue uh, gas jacket, so it's been dyed, just like the 60 water. You can see how it's really livened up the room. Um, I have um, the camera set at incandescent balance still, so I do have a 3200 Kelvin balance dialed into the camera, which is making uh, the room appear a little bit blue. If I go back to my white balance for daylight, um, you can see there's a couple of different modes. I have a shade mode, I have a cloudy day mode, and I have a full daylight mode. Full daylight mode is showing you that the bulb still has a little bit of warmth to it. Uh, and if you like the slightly warm interior, I think this, that might be the way to go, is to set your camera at your resulting uh, outdoor color balance. 
uh, to accommodate this photo flood if you're going to have a window in the shot. Now, if you're not going to have a window in the shot, it doesn't matter. You can stay on your incandescent setting. Your images will be slightly cool. Uh, or you can go back, you can go to your daylight setting and then your images will be slightly warm and then just play with that balance and post. Um, either way, I think that it, it really puts kind of an uncontrollable highlight in that lampshade. Now, you might not mind that little bit of clip that's going on in the, in the highlight in the lamp itself, um, especially if it was just something in the background and not necessarily in the foreground sharing frame space with your talent. Um, but I think that it might be a little bit aggressive for an on-camera bulb. It's 250 watts, and as you saw previously, the 60-watt blue has a much more manageable highlight. It's cleaner. I mean, this has got a clean highlight as well, pretty much, but the, the wattage, the output of the 60-watt blue, I think is a little bit better for on-camera, especially if you were going to have somebody, for instance, you know, sitting under this lamp reading a book for, uh, for some reason. Um, you don't want that highlight in the lamp to go over... Um, really go over 95% IRE on your histogram because at that point you're losing image detail and you can't really reclaim that in post. Uh, the highlights will just get sort of muddy and strange looking. Um, so there's going to be a little bit of blown out um, detail in that highlight at 250 watts. You could put the, the lamp on a dimmer, but when you do, as I said before, if you dim incandescent bulbs, um, you end up changing their color temperature and they get warmer with more resistance on the on the line. So um, really the the best alternative for affecting the output of incandescent sources is to change the bulbs to lower wattages. Now with theatricals you can't necessarily do that. There's a couple of fixtures that'll take 500 or 1000 watt uh, bulbs um, but for the most part uh, you don't have the flexibility uh, in a theatrical conventional fixture of globing up and down the way you do with a practical uh, using a household screw base like a, a medium screw base uh, which is what a standard light bulb is using so um, there's a distinct advantage to being able to globe way down you saw in, my, in our initial uh, bulb test uh, the very first bulb we tried was a 15 watt appliance bulb uh, and it was totally manageable um, we were at a, a nice shooting stop of a I think we were at a four and a half or uh, uh, something close to that with the 15 watt bulb. So we had some nice depth of field characteristics that uh, were working to our advantage. Uh, the overall uh, ambience in the room was, was uh, manageable. About what we have here because I'm now currently at a T8. So I've had to close down the lens uh, and I still have a pretty clippy highlight in the lampshade. Um, but when I close down the lens to T8, the room ambience starts to crush as well. Uh, and that is when we're going to start needing fill lights um, and so forth. Now I can throw some fill in here right now with my standby conventional. And you can see that it gives a little bit of extra help to the shadows, especially on the back wall. Um, but not to a large measure. Uh, but that might be just enough uh, to make this lamp work on camera. Now I'd, I'd have to close the lens down a little bit. Uh, I'd have to go to maybe an eight and a half. Uh, or even an 11. And you can see that the lampshade starts coming in, but now look at that back wall, it's going, it's going to black again. So that's not, uh, that's not ideal. Um, but this is, all, this is all subjective, right? So this is all up to you. Uh, if you like really contrasty situations, if you want there to be a, a, a fairly rapid fall off from highlight to shadow on your subject, if you don't mind a little bit of a uh, of a spotty or clippy highlight in the lampshade uh, and you're going for a general realistic ambience, this, um, this might be totally fine. Uh, it's really up to you. Um, you almost can't be wrong except if I were to globe this thing up to 250 watts like I've got it and then try to go back to my original shooting stop, that's just not going to happen. As you can see here, the lampshade is just, it's, it's gone. As far as manageable detail, it's, it's all well over 100 110 percent and uh, there's nothing that I can pull back uh, in post to help that image out so again if I wanted to use this as general fill for the room and not have this practical on camera yeah I might throw this bulb in here and really pump up the volume in this room as long as this lamp doesn't appear on camera then we're okay but if I have to see it I can't have that highlight be that that spotty like that so I hope this has helped um, is, uh, as a comparison, these, these nine different uh, household bulbs and photo floods 
uh, to give you some idea of the advantage of globing up and down wattage wise and even in a couple of instances using uh, daylight dyed photo floods to give you a little help uh, with your color management. So um, let's move on to the next topic at this point. Um, but uh, if you have any questions about this, you can certainly reach out to me through email. Uh, you can either use uh, my uh, office email or you can reach out to me through the LMS. I'll be happy to address your questions. Um, or we can set up a Zoom or a uh, phone meeting if you uh, have a, a fairly extensive set of questions. All right, thanks so much for your attention and I'll talk to you again soon.